They all come from there. In this instance for me it was my arrogance. And arrogance is not of God. But I ignored him. I ignored her, Mother, Father, God. And I was arrogant. And had I not come to this realization, which is a profound realization for me, very important one, and a, a life-changing one that I've gone through these last few days whilst fasting, then even whilst doing God's work, the enemy found a way to attack it and to try and stop me. We have to fight the carnal mind because when you fight the carnal mind, you fight the very passageway by which the, the suggestions and the lower energies that surround that negative aspect of our human nature can influence you. And the only way to fight the carnal mind is to make time to get still. Even if you're serving God like I am, I have to make more time to get still. Because over these years, despite the fact I was in service, I've had a bit of a demon hanging on me. Oh, now we can start the killing today. If we could just learn to give, give a little love. Hey guys, I just did another video about being sick, but I mentioned in there about how ultimately it is my carnal mind that has made me sick. Now, my carnal mind is filled with very useful and very unuseful attributes. All of ours are. And my carnal mind in this instance has grown to be very, uh, I'm going to call it spiritually egoic. But I mean in my actions, not in my demeanor, not in my mannerisms, but in my actions. And by that I mean that my mind has pushed itself, the carnal mind. See, the body mind will always look after you. The body mind will always allow you to stop when you need to stop. And if you're, if you're in line enough with your body mind, you won't crash yourself. But when your carnal mind and your ego overrides it, then you can crash your body because you do too much. And you go beyond the natural rhythms of your body. That's why people who are overeating and drinking alcohol, this is all carnal minded and they're making their body more sick. When they fast, their body mind gets to be the loudest thing, the carnal mind's completely shut off and the, the body mind's very loud and it says, yes, more of this please, I, I, I need more of this and this is the way to be. That's why many people who binge on junk food, if they do a long water fast and they get out of their carnal mind, which is doing it to them, uh, seeking the pleasure, etc., then the body mind resets itself. And actually, you don't want to eat junk food. You want to eat only healthy food. It's really strange how it resets you in that way. So my carnal mind, for all it's not so bad at misbehaving, it still does try to misbehave. Now, the carnal mind also, to me, is that place whereby that thing that we label as the enemy or Satan or the devil can speak to you. And it's through your flesh, the spirit versus the flesh. Now, my carnal mind has had whispers from that aspect of energy that we don't want to be listening to. And you might say, well, how can that be? Because what my carnal mind has pushed me to do is to do more work to help this lot. But in doing that, it's burnt me out. It's burnt my body out because I'm going over the top of my God mind, my body mind. And my carnal mind saying, no, keep going. And it's doing it in a spiritually egoic way. You have to do it. This is your duty. You're John and you have this responsibility. God chose you to look after these kids. Now, for all these things are true, it's also true of other people all over the planet. So I'm nothing special. But my carnal mind has been pushing me in that sense. What will happen to them without you? Now, to some degree, I've had to work as much as I've worked to have achieved what I've achieved. And I will continue working hard to achieve what I achieve. But what the carnal mind has tricked me away from is time for myself. And that's where I see that as a whisper from the enemy, to be honest with you. Because I know to give to others, you have to give to yourself, but I've ignored that. I tell other people it, but I have not practiced what I preached. 
my spiritual egoism has made me think that I'm strong enough due to my spiritual practice and due to my healthy living and due to this and that that I don't need to give to myself I can just keep going and my body has said actually no you can't and now I'm suffering for that with my health this is a sneaky in my eyes attack you know just as this started last time, then the cars were written off, which, which stressed, stressed me immeasurably and made it much worse. But then of course you all responded and, and God came back through because we all got together and we fought. But at the same time, the timing was such that I'm now in agony and really inefficient. I've managed to... Uh, get some stuff done but not as much as what needs doing and while I'm like this I know there are problems I know there are children out there that I we should be mobilizing to get to but because I'm sick we're not so the children suffer a little bit longer because my carnal mind pushed me too far and that's sometimes how it can work with the tricks of the enemy as I say the carnal mind is what is communicated through via that energy that we call the enemy now the enemy is just your flesh in the end, but what is it that speaks through your flesh, is the question, energetically speaking. So, for all it was doing perceivably a good thing in God's work, it was also at the same time to me a sneaky attack. Because, had this gone on much longer before I realised what was going on or what I was doing, then I could have destroyed everything here, because I could have destroyed me and my body and who knows. There's only so much a physical body can take. And working 18 hours a day for 14, 15, 15, 15, 15, 15. nearly five years is enough to give even a young, healthy person a heart attack. You just don't know. And I was just too spiritually arrogant to listen. And God was telling me all the time, rest, rest, rest. You know, one day I prayed, I'd love to go home and rest, but we don't have the money. The very next day, somebody randomly donated the money and said, I'd like to pay for I didn't say to anything to anyone. I'd like to pay for you to go home and see your family. That's how loud God was. He was like, no, you go and you rest. One time, when I first met Fritzy, I didn't want to leave the country. I said, I don't want to leave. I, I, I shouldn't leave. I should stay here and, and fight for the children. I should keep going. Someone sent me some money and said, this is for you, do with it what you want. So I did. And when I checked in on KLM, just as a big sign from God, it randomly dropped me in the expensive seats for free in row 11. And I got a big comfortable chair to myself for the same price as an economy seat. And that was God telling me, you need to rest and I'm giving you it. There it is. But I didn't listen, always didn't and even when I left for these places I'd stay at my laptop working and even when I got signs to stop I'd go but it needs to get done as if God couldn't cope without me doing that little bit of extra work and he probably could have he probably would have found other ways and I'm sure he's spent many a year just face palming himself and along with his angels watching me going oh he's doing it again he's not listening you know I've had digestive problems Every time I've had a digestive problem and then said, right, that's it. I'm not doing any work. It's gone straight away. And I'm just being too carnally minded to, uh, to take note, to accept it, that I have limits. Because my carnal spiritual ego was just way too loud. And I was just thinking I was invincible and unstoppable. And God knew best. And that's the importance of spending more time in meditation. Now, I haven't spent enough time here just due to the nature of it. Thousands of children, people all around me always asking for help. 77 staff to manage, fundraising, this, you guys, the YouTube, the emails. Even sometimes my meditations that I do sit down to do, I don't get deep enough anymore. It doesn't give me the benefit that I need. I'm still aligned with God. It seems sometimes I've got an open passageway 
it's almost like my life at, on days is psychedelic automatically without without any uh, meditation it's just there from my previous practice but this is something for all of us to learn because if we are not willing to listen to even if we are doing God's work and we are not willing to listen to the mind of God which is the the body brain and we push through it with our ego and our personality our carnal mind then even when you're in line and doing God's work then you open the door for a way for the negative aspect to attack you because your spiritual egoism as I have done your spiritual pride can even damage the gift of your temple because you think that you have to do it and you say it has to get done this is my responsibility and despite what I have preached despite what many of us preach that's one of the hardest things to put the brakes on to actually put the brakes on especially when you're in service to others so we have to fight that and we have to fight to stay on top of that because leaving even a doorway like that open can create the weakness, the chink in your armor for the enemy to drop this whole thing. Imagine if I got so sick that I couldn't even post on YouTube and I couldn't manage this place. What would happen to these kids? And the devil himself would be rubbing his hands together, hoping that he can get me to do that. But that's not going to happen because we can fight the devil by being a little bit selfish in that retrospect, in this instance as I can fight him by giving to myself for a while and then I can give to others as I heal and progress the carnal mind is your friend and your enemy it's your friend because if you can teach it well it can look after you and it does look after everybody but it's your enemy because it's the space and the place energetically vibrationally where those lower energies which serve no purpose in your higher good or in the work of God like arrogance all the other bad stuff as I've always said sexual immorality addiction they all come from there in this instance for me it was my arrogance and arrogance is not of God but I ignored him I ignored her mother father God and I was arrogant and had I not come to this realization which is a profound realization for me very important one and a, a life-changing one that I've gone through these last few days whilst fasting then even whilst doing God's work the enemy found a way to attack it and to try and stop me we have to fight the carnal mind because when you fight the carnal mind you fight the very passageway by which the, the suggestions and the lower energies that surround that negative aspect of our human nature can influence you and the only way to fight the carnal mind is to make time to get still even if you're serving God like I am I have to make more time to get still because over these years despite the fact I was in service I've had a bit of a demon hanging on me and it's my spiritual arrogance of teaching others exactly what I know I know the tools to heal myself I know the tools to not do this but I'd come to the point because God put me here I have to do it I have to show him how good I am I have to show how it's done I have to prove to everybody what it's what it's like to, to serve God I've got the name of God at my back and I have to show everyone what happens when you turn over to God and this is not what God wants this is what I believed he wanted this is my carnal mind speaking and because my carnal mind was speaking about God I perceived it to be an actual part of serving God I never perceived it for one second to be enmity, en <laughs> enmity to serving God. 
but it was. Even though the chatter was seemingly about pushing yourself to do more good. The whole concept was fine, doing more good was fine, but the chatter from the carnal mind, pushing, pushing, pushing in that way, even though God was telling me, take a rest, calm down, slow down, there's no need for this. That was the enemy. And that's how complexly sneaky it can be. That's why it's so important to get as many hours meditation in as you can. Or as much fasting as you can. And I will be making more time to give to myself because of that. So, despite all my talk of besting the carnal mind over these years, for all I've bested mine with regards to addiction, immorality, all of these things that used to drag me down and make me a much lower and subservient man, I would say, than what I am today, by my standards today. And for all I've taught thousands, millions of people how to get rid of your carnal mind and how important it is to nurture the sacred secretion and to eat right and to overcome this enemy and how it's allegorically written in all of the scriptures to overcome this enemy within us, our animal nature, our carnal mind. All the while I was doing that, my carnal mind was playing a game with me and I hadn't even noticed it. And its game was pushing me too hard and making me feel like I had to do that despite knowing all along that God was telling me not to. So even those with a great deal of fasting and spiritual practice, we're still in a daily battle. I'm still Samson wrestling his lion. All of us are, every day. And sometimes it will find a more cunning way to pull you down. But then you'll realize what it's doing. And you'll defeat the beast. You'll defeat the lion just as Samson did, the roaring ego, which is what the lion is. And when you do, you'll find that space within you in meditation where you're secreting DMT, the beautiful honey of life, which allows you to commune with God and hear the body brain better and to hear the intuitive brain better and to hear God better. In other words, when you look inside the lion's carcass as it is in the Bible, you'll find the honey. and the substance, which is the DMT. So, my little guy just came to say hello. hello. So we have to fight that carnal mind every single day. Otherwise, the enemy will get in there somehow because that's how he can speak to you. And you'll try to destroy whatever it is you're trying to do in God's name. Guaranteed. God bless, guys. Bye. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe, as it really helps us to grow the channel and with it help more children here in Tanzania. Also, don't forget you can support our work by sharing with children in crisis here. Be it sharing for a particular need or even sharing one on one support for education housing, food, and medical care. It can be done for as little as the cost of a cup of coffee a week back in the West after all. Just visit www.sharetanzania.co.uk to find out more. Lastly, remember you can also support us via Patreon, www.patreon.com forward slash feathers tail and help keep us here in Tanzania to continue our work. The links for the website and for the Patreon are in the description box of this video. Love and light guys, see you soon.